the U.S. and India have very different foreign policy styles. The U.S. is accustomed to having all of its partners be junior partners. India is not at all interested in being anybody's junior partner. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, India, a rising global power. India has emerged as a major force in geopolitics. It's a democracy of more than one billion people. It's one of eight nations with nuclear weapons. It has an exploding economy that rivals China's, and its influence in the Asia-Pacific is growing. The U.S. supported India through its expansion, and now India is trumpeting a new message, says non-resident senior fellow Teresita Schaefer, that it will not stand in any nation's shadow. What does India have to offer as a rising global power? What it's always had is a huge population and a very substantial group of really talented people. What's new in the last 20 years uh, is a very dynamic economy. Uh, the economy was always a drag on India and it's become a definite plus. The other thing which is not so new but is important uh, is it's um, expanding military strength, uh, and its increasingly uh, dynamic and, and productive relationships, not so much with its immediate neighbors, but a little bit further afield, particularly in East Asia and also in the Persian Gulf. India is one of the few countries in the world with a nuclear arsenal. Does this contribute to its reputation as a growing global power? The nuclear arsenal, which of course uh, as a military factor is, uh, dates from 1998, uh, makes India a country that the rest of the world has to have on its security radar screen anyway. It doesn't necessarily make India a global power. Uh, it makes it a very important regional power and as far as India being a global power, I would say that it's on the, its way there, but it isn't really quite there. Teresita, the tension between India and Pakistan dates back to the partition of Pakistan in 1948, and the discord continues to this day. What gives birth to that tension and discord that we're seeing between these two countries now? Pakistan has sought right from the start was to be treated as fully the strategic equal of India. Now, at one level, that's an obvious impossibility. Uh, the population of India is seven times that of Pakistan. The economy is more than more like eight or nine times that of Pakistan. So those uh, measurable factors aren't equal. Um, but as a result, and as a result of a lot of accumulated grievances over the years, including very much including India's role in giving birth to an independent Bangladesh, which had been part of Pakistan. Um, there is a school of thought um, in parts of the Pakistan army, but certainly in the uh, militant movement, uh, that anything that destabilizes India is good for Pakistan. Pakistan is critical for the United States mission in Afghanistan. So how does this relationship affect the U.S.-India relationship? Where we are, uh, after the Obama administration came in uh, is that the United States has large numbers of troops in Afghanistan and is convinced that it cannot accomplish its goals in Afghanistan without a, an at least neutral and preferably supportive Pakistan. Um, and at the same time, India is deeply opposed to any settlement in Afghanistan that will make it effectively a Pakistani protectorate because they see that as an incubator for terrorism that's going to come at them. India's economic power is mind-boggling and there is a school of thought that India is more of an economic threat than it is an economic partner. I wouldn't say threat, I think that's a bit strong, but I think in any big economic relationship that the United States maintains, you have partnership and competition all tangled up. India and China are the two fast-growing economies in the world uh, post-2008. So you can expect that India's economy is going to grow smartly and grow a lot faster than its population. But as this happens, 
it's going to start exporting things that the United States also wants to export. And we're going to be competing in different markets. Um, we are also going to continue to have trade disputes, which is nothing new. Uh, we're going to argue, they're going to argue about uh, enhanced trade access to the United States market, the issue of visas for Indians who work for Indian companies or international companies in the United States has already been a bone of contention between the two countries. So what's the best step forward for India and the U.S.? India is not a country in crisis. Uh, it doesn't really pose great dangers to U.S. foreign policy. Um, the United States tends to make policy towards Pakistan out of fear of what happens if things go wrong, and towards India out of hope of what happens if things go right. I think we need to make sure that we keep focused on India because this is not a relationship that will benefit by neglect. It's a high maintenance relationship. Both countries have their hang-ups uh, to which they give full vent if you don't have steady hands on the tiller. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, Go to brookings.edu slash mobile.